Virginia, uh, of course, I started to, before I get to drinking, if, I, well, I picked this product up, Super Cilia from the health food store. I didn't know what it was. It's supposed to be good for pure ionic, whatever, ener energized and delivered uh, to the cells. Some sort of cell builder thing. I don't know. Just trying it out. I tried things out. I figured it ain't going to kill me. It's fine. And then, of course, what I also got here, I got the liquid chlorophyll chlorophyll very good for you you know digestive thing all kind of thing and the bad breath thing the whole thing you know so i did that and i add some of that uh to what i did well you sp I, I, I take a shot of it right but this this morning did i take some of this morning what i did is i have this I have this juice that i picked up pure pure tart cherry fresh press 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 juice not from concentrate not for country, very important. Country just means that they put some sugar water there, whatever have you. But it says, feel good, live good. Feel good, live good. Feel good, live good. That was a big thing. But then I said, feel good. What kind of juice is that? Then I turned around for it was, but So that's feel good, live good juice, right? Like I said, I add that to this, to this, um, to this juice here. That's what this is here. I added the chlorophyll thing, so I'm drinking some of that. Then my sister, then my sister um, notices that I'm, you know, walking on sort of bending over a little. I noticed that kicked in, uh, in Eastern Cape too. And she said, oh no, you need, but I had that little bit and, and here's what I did for it. So she gave me these two omega-3 fish oil concentrate. See, in, in Cape Town, I do, we do use um, uh, salmon oil, but I guess, no, we use salmon oil, but it's like in, in uh, whatever. Then this other thing called uh, glycosine, glycosine semi chlorodyne, whatever, MSM. Right, so she gave me these two, so I'm just taking this regimen now, right? See, let me tell you a thing, look. Some people you don't argue with, right? No matter what. So, so as I take this, she also, because she's in the medical field, she has this book here, so I'm gonna look up these things in this nutrition healing book, like that. Right, in regard to natural health, seven million copies sold. Oh, that's not a lot of, we got a lot of books here. Between her medical books and mine, Whatever stuff, my more literary stuff. Then we have a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna be dealing with these, these two for the rest of the time. And I'm uh, here because I'll be traveling around, so I get a, oh here's some pills I got to take from that thing right there. So what I'm gonna do? Oh, mm. what I'm gonna do? For the rest of my, for about a month, I'll be bouncing between. Here, Virginia and New York. So, when I'm in New York, I'll be walking a lot more. Oh, stuff is strong. So, I use this to cover up the, because I don't like dust mice. So I cover up my glasses with something, you know. So I did with this one there. So I gotta peel them up. Da, 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 da. Then when I get to St. Louis, I'll be sort of. You know, in the next month, I'll still be concentrated. So I'll really concentrate my regimen and whatever. Right now, we're going to go to the Y. Yeah, here. I'm going to go to the Y. And um, so um, I'll start another regimen. Where's my uh, thing? Um, 
Oh, let me get this, show you what I'm gonna do. My exercise regimen that I had been neglected for a long time. I think it's right here. It's gotta be remember, exercise regimen neglected for a long time. This is right here. It's really a unique thing that I do all the time. What I call it. Now I can get back into a circle right here. See, this is called a uh, uh, somatics, and uh, it's, a, it's a, it builds your core, whatever have you. So, I mean, this is some pages from the the book that I have. I gotta find another book because every time I get my somatic books, they still disappear. I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, so then, you know, just show you how to do the exercises. So I'll be doing that a lot, especially when I get to St. Louis. I can't really do it here a lot when I get myself established here. All this because at the Ados conference, I don't really walk around, well, I guess it's vanity, but I don't be really walking around like an old man, you know what I mean? Oh, I probably will be. Um, I found this picture. This is the negative of a famous, very famous picture of mine. And I think I'm a, when I get to New York, I'm gonna get it, it reproduced or whatever have you, so I have it again. But I found the, the thing here, so this is cool. Um, okay, that's not well. That's not the gist of this thing. I'm just trying to make everybody healthy. Come on now, be healthy, be healthy, be healthy. Whatever, whatever, understand you have a health, just do it a little bit more. Now my biggest thing, both both my fraternity brother and my sister, man, look, please, you can't, it's difficult to change people's uh, diet. They say it's more difficult to change a diet than a religion. But the thing is, every time I talk to them about something like that, and I, 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 I can't bug them about it, right? Because I'm too close to them. Like that, you can only say it one time, Hey, don't look at the stain because you don't try to look. Somebody, you can't change people. Let's put it that way. But you try to cut them down. So you say it one time. Otherwise, you'll be a nag, and you, it's not going to do anything. But the Coca Cola's got the Coca Cola. Um, okay, now I want to give you, show you something. This is, uh, show you two things. First of all, this is a certificate. USAF, that's United States Air Force Medical Center, Wright Patterson, Wright Patterson Air Force Base certificate. This is a certified that A, the AIC Airman First Class. Uh, Anthony J. Sloan has specifically completed medical laboratory specialist tra uh, training phase two. Now phase one, it's like when you have, you know, it's phase one, of, was, we, we, we did phase one that I was at, uh, was at Shepard Air Force Base. I think it was Shepard, yeah, Shepard was someplace um, in Texas. And phase uh, one is like, um, uh, well, if you're in the first year medical field, first they give you like six weeks of intensive, basically first aid. And then the phase one training for laboratory technicians is, um, is the second longest school in the, at the time, in the medical field. The first one being the to fix the medical equipment, which is really, that I should have been in that because I do have some sort of little mechanical thing, but then again, I cut myself out of this matter. Um, anyway, so that's, actually I was really good, I was good as a lab technician. Um, but that's phase one, you have six, you have classes six days a week, like six hours a day. So, if, you know, if you want, anyway, they really train you, right? Uh, medical laboratory specialist, da da da, da. This is a cheap. Oh, yeah, this is the, okay, Major Butcher. Okay, great. I'll, I've told the story, I gotta tell you the story. This is great, this is great. Right past in the Air Force Base. Now, a buddy of mine that, that went, we went through phase one together, and then we ended up at, um, you know, in Wright Patterson, the first phase food true training. Okay, we're a laboratory, right? So, and if they start out, but we have to be phlebotomists, you know, taking blood out of people, you know, sticking them, whatever have you. I was very good, why? Because I hate needles, I think that's why, but I was really, really good, I got really, really good. Anyway, his name was James Slaughter. Okay, no problem. So if you imagine you come in, the first thing you think you gotta take some blood, so you, the guy's taking your blood, and you see his name taken, Slaughter, okay. No problem. I take your blood. The head of the N the the, the non commission of the and I say non commission officer and whatever and non commission officer and uh, whatever it is. Oh, look, the, the sergeant in charge of the, of the laboratory. His name was Sergeant Blood. Okay, so first you see you know Airman Slaughter. Then you're walking around Sergeant Blood. You go like, oh, that's interesting. The chief pathologist for the, the thing at the time, his name was uh, Major Bruce A. Butcher. <laughs> oh, 
we couldn't get more perfect than that. People would freak out. Anyway, so, so, so he's in charge. He's, he's the chief clinical pathologist. And then some some Owen L. Felton, Lieutenant Colonel of Air Force MC. His name is Chairman of the Department of Histopathology. I, it was a histopathology. Histopathology in his charge, and the Colonel somebody is the charge. It was the commander of the base, I guess. So this is my certificate, signed by by three important people, three important white people. So you know I'm qualified from the military. See, my certificate. That's right. I'm medically trained. But the important thing about, especially in in in, in uh, in the medical field in the Air Force, you trained in every phase of the laboratory. I mean, you know, you got serology, hematology, uh, uh, chemistry, uh, um, uh, pathology, all kinds of stuff, uh, all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, all kinds of stuff. But one of the things we do is we do autopsies. Cut the thing open, you know, and look at it, da 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 da. Okay, I'm gonna get to that. Let me get to that right now. No, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to do it because that sort of ends it. Uh, okay, also in this little folder that I found, I found... Because, okay, so that's Wright Patterson. Then at Wright Patterson, after that, I went to our, our duty station. I got assigned to uh, McGuire Air Force Base, the dispensary, which was kind of weird because the dispensary, we had a lot of people in the dispensary at the time. You, during the time of the Vietnam era, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of, a lot of excess people. It doesn't matter. So... Uh, at the dispensary, all those skills that we had, we don't really use them, you know, because it's, it's a dispensary. But the phlebotomy is good, so whatever, whatever. I'll give you that later. So I found this thing. Uh, this guy, Department of Air Force Clinic, uh, U.S. Air Force Clinic McGuire, Clinic McGuire, McGuire Air Force Base, December 18, 1973. It is great, it is with great pleasure that I... Or was assigned to, or was it goes to, uh, at the time I guess, uh, it's a good one I'll get now, uh, Staff Sergeant Sloan. That would be me, Staff Sergeant, I. Um, that E4, whatever it was. Um, it is with great pleasure that I forward the attached letter of appreciation and, 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 and certificate from the Sickle Cell Anemia and Charity Incorporated at Pemberton, New Jersey. You are you are to be highly commended for your untiring devotion and unselfish efforts while working with this program. It's always a pleasure to have men of your caliber in the organization. The organization meaning United States Air Force, right? So I said, okay, fine. I was looking at a. Is this a copy of it? No, this is now. This was sent. This was. Oh yeah. This was Harvey Hertz. Uh, whatever. Um, uh, yes, medical, whatever, medical core here. This, then this, I guess, I don't know who, uh, December 18th, oh, December 17th, this cat sent this thing. This was a great pleasure. It basically, they say, they say the same thing. A little bit, let me just see what this says. Two, this is two, see, this was two paragraphs, or two, whatever, and this is two also. Now from George M. Wells, whatever his name, Brigadier General U.S. Air Force Com Commander. He, he attached the six cell anemia letter, I guess, from the 26th. I look, it's attached. I said, uh, as to the SG, I don't know who the SG is, to the SG, I don't know. It says, it's with great pleasure to forward the attached letter and certificate of appreciation and recognition for the outstanding support provided by Sergeant Anthony J. Sloan to Sickle Cell Anemia and Charity Incorporated. This unselfish effort on behalf of Sickle Cell Anemia and Charity Incorporated reflects great credit on this wing as well as the United States Air Force. Okay, so he's the wing commander. Oh, I know this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is the guy. I want to tell you, this is the guy I sort of, I don't say embarrassed, but this a whole thing is, that's, wow, it was amazing. Okay, so, so basically, this, okay, this is December 17th. Oh, so December 26th, I'm sorry, 26th of November 73, this, um, from the Sickle Cell Anemia and Charity Incorporated, uh, 228 Purdue Avenue, Pemberton, New Jersey, 08068. Okay, attention, General Welch, Base Commander. Okay, so this person is writing this guy here, right? 
And this guy here obviously sends this, this stuff to this guy here. So it's like going, it's going from the organization to the uh, wing commander. Is this actually it was a wing commander? Commander, and the wing commander sends it to the uh, the commander. We kind of shall go. So, so the, this whole chain started with well, started with this thing here. Uh, General Wells, Kodesh commander, blah blah blah. Uh, Sergeant uh, Anthony J. Sloan, da 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 da. Because I wasn't no staff sergeant. So somebody messed up. Oh, that was, uh, wait a minute, doesn't matter. Um, uh, Sergeant Anthony J. Song, USAF Clinic. I know McGuire Air Force Clinic. In close, you will find a certificate of appreciation from Sickle Cell Anemia and Charity Incorporated of Pemberton, New Jersey. This certificate is our way of saying thank you uh, for all the wonderful assistance that you have given our organization. We wish you much success in all your future endeavors. Oh, I guess no, wait. Sincerely yours, Mrs. Carolyn Lyons, President. Okay? And what did she send? She sent this. Six of the Charity the Remembrance of Zero Appreciation awarded to Anthony J. Sloan, Sergeant, U.S. Air Force, blah, blah, blah. So I say this civic is to express our profound appreciation and gratitude for your contributions to, you to fight the sickle cell, to fight, fight against sickle cell anemia. Without the assistance uh, of persons such as yourself, an organization would be without meaning and cease to exist. Your demonstration of compassion will motivate others to follow your excellent example. It's very nice. 26 November 73, Carolyn Lyons, President. Carolyn D. Lyons, something like that. So basically, the organization, we, we did work. Uh, because we was in Clinton, we always said, of course, I'm the black guy. Well, Bo, uh, Sergeant Clapp was also, he was the head of the thing. And he's the head, head NCOIC, the, the, the sergeant that fought, taught to all us, all us other sergeants in Emmett. And so I convinced them, said, look, we, we got to help the community. Now, all these people. So we, we went out and started helping this organization. Or whatever, I forget what we did, but we did. So they sent me a, a this is how the military works. This, so we have to have a thing like so. So this person sent it to the big time general. Ta da. The big time general sends a, a letter to the commander. Oh no, she, she writes the letter, right? Along with the certificate, and sends it. To the big time general. The big time general sends it to the colonel. And the colonel sends everything. They're basically to my um to my captain, right? Uh, he didn't write no letter. Actually it made the captain. Really we didn't get along. Why is this always happening to me? It seems like there's always somebody in the chain of command, or whatever it is, that just don't like me. It's, and from the very beginning, if I, this guy, the, the captain of my thing, whatever, he's just the administrative captain. He doesn't have him do anything with my work. But he is the only person in the whole, my whole existence there. He was like my enemy. This guy was trying to get me. But every time he tried to get me, something happened, and some, some, something would come down, and he would have to back off. It was a very interesting dynamic. Anyway, so they. So that's that's how it goes. So I mean, we gotta set. I don't know. We meaning a D O S. Somebody has to set this thing up. Okay. So I look at all that. I should end there, but I was looking at something else. No, I have to save this for something else. Uh, I have to save this certificate. This other certificate. This was in 1967, and it had to do with uh, with something else. Which I won't do that right now. Now, why did I bring all this stuff up? Well, things have been happening. Now, when I got here, there's some there's some uh, young brothers across the street here. You know, I don't know what they're whatever they're young brothers. And um and I, I was with, I was I was coming into the house and uh, one of the guys was talking to my brother-in-law, and so I said, oh, let me stop being hip. No, I'll leave you hip for the thing. So uh, you know, I start talking to him. He said, why why blah blah blah. And then I explained why I was wearing what I was wearing. And I, I looked at me, then he said, uh, he said, look, I gotta go take a shower. We should talk later. Da, 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 blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, sure. sure. I'm always willing to talk to people. Why? Because everybody's willing to talk, you know? Cool. So a little bit later, I'm looking for the guy. He's across the street, the little thing there. And I come in, and oh no, no, brother, you shouldn't be here. You know, I'm rolling a blunt. He's rolling a blunt, you know, with the cigar thing, you know, with the herb or whatever have you. And I said, no, it's all right, it's all right, you know. So I, you know, I, you know, I, I, I tell him, I tell him something about, 
so on and so on. So we sit down, he says, so I got to ask you a question, man. And then, you know, so they're talking about uh, cannabis and and then, and uh, so, he said, this is from the earth and this is natural, this is good for you, blah, 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 blah. I say, no, I said, yeah, but I was trying to say something. And this other brother, younger, younger brother, another brother, was with him. And so they, so they basically, he, He's asking me stuff, but you can tell him, give an answer, but he can tell, all he wants to do is, as I say, always say, win the argument. There's no argument. You know? And the other brother is listening, and he's saying, no, but da da da. So they're going back and forth, and they said that. Then finally he finishes rolling the thing, you know. So out of respect, I guess he doesn't, he leaves. He goes out. We were there for a little while. He goes out to smoke his blunt. You know, and the other brother was talking to me, and we'd be talking. Now, this other brother, he's a little bit more reasonable. He actually listens. We have a regular conversation. And here's what I want to say. Now, remember, I'm trained as a laboratory technician. I did autopsy. I know that, oh, yeah, you can say all you want about cannabis, whatever it is, but in the end, if you're smoking it, when you do autopsy, if you see a lung, if you look at a lung, is usually pink, right? Of course, that's right. a smoker's lung, whether it's cigarettes, or whatever have you, cannabis, whatever you're smoking, it's a little, it's a little gray, right? But, but also, like for instance, I did an autopsy one time, coal miner. When they say black lung disease, a coal miner, this is amazing. Yeah, a, a coal miner's lung. This guy was in his, I guess, 80s or something like that, 70s, whatever. His lung is actually black. And, and you can feel the grit, the coal grit that's built up all these years in this lung. It's amazing. People don't understand about the body. You got to clean your body out. Oh, that's what I said. I know it had. When he first came in, I'm just saying that. When I first came in, he was talking about the smoke sponsor. I said, well, yeah, but you know, what did I tell him? I said, you know, I, I used to smoke and, and you know, what I would do is every year, I pick a I pick a month like like February and not smoke just to clean my body out. But then I changed it right before my birthday. So every June I wouldn't I wouldn't smoke just to reset uh, just to, to clean my body out. And the other brother said, and, and the, other, the guy was no, but blah blah blah. He's just smoking all the time. And the other the young the other brother didn't make some sense. He said, well, no, he's saying it's like a reset. It's like reset. You got to reset. Now we don't have to. Do anyway, so he finally leaves. Why don't reset or not? So what, uh, what I could have said, but I did, what I did, what I did is I did the Ella Baker thing, right? Ella Baker, what she used to do, she had asthma and everything like that. Back in the 60s, when you had these smoke-filled rooms, she had asthma. She would have a, um, I guess it was a damn towel, a cough, and she would just sit there, you know, breathing and listening to everything, listening to everything folks were saying. Now, here's the thing, and she wouldn't say anything unless they would ask a question. You know, uh, Fundi, blah, blah, blah. You know, they would, they would ask a question and then they get back to the discussion. Now, you have to understand this. This is very important. They would, look, look my experience, like when we were in Web, was, was there, we had a little revolutionary cell at, at, um, at, at Bronx Community College. We had a little group of equal male and female. And uh, we would study, you know, we'd be studying, you know, whatever, Mao, Che, Lumumba, you know, whatever, you know, books, you know, we'd be, we'd be reading. And then we get the information to the larger groups in the proximity college at the time. But these, but, but sometimes we had these meetings, not just us, but well, we would be studying a long time. But you would have these smoke-filled meetings all night long. You say it started 6 o'clock at night. I'm exaggerating a little bit. It would go to like 6, 7 o'clock the next morning. Like this is 12, 14 hours of like discussion. People boom, 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 trying to work stuff out, trying to work things out, right? And I'm realizing one of the not the problem, one of the situations that we have in this modern era is people have these they have these call-in programs. They have they maybe they maybe at most four hours or you know, but usually an hour, two hours, four hours, right? And um, so people are making they're trying to make their points over over these virtual meetings, right? But the but the communications you you, you have a um, basically have your electronics between your communications. I actually don't like to talk over the phone to to call in a thing. I mean, I like to see the person well so you have enough time to hash things out because if you realize you let the people talk long enough but right, they'll 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 make their point then they'll realize they're repeating their points they'll, they'll, they'll calm down so when this brother did his thing he left whatever I, I didn't say this but i could have said 
Well, you know, I do. I used to do autopsies, blah blah blah. But I didn't bring that up because they, they, he, he just wanted to win the argument. He would just kept on, you know, it wouldn't make no sense at this particular point. But if we was in, if we was in thinking we go long enough at some particular point where people exhaust their little arguments, then I would say, then I could say, well, you know, smoking is which is what it does because I because because I, you know, I was a lab technician. I used to do autopsies, not bring them up. But I wouldn't bring them up. They have to believe me. So you you, you understand what I'm getting at. So we have a flaw in this current movement because it's a virtual movement, and we don't have enough time for people to work out what they what they're thinking and they get. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the only flaw that I see what's going on. But things will be worked out. Hopefully, my regimen by the time we get ADS movement, then I won't be bent over. You know what I mean? I'll be a lot healthier because I'll be in a different regimen. Yeah, like that. So I just wanted to give you all that information. <sighs> Exhausting. Uh, well, cause I think is necessary. This is um. Message, a point of view from me, take from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect from a desk of the A D O S that would be the North American descendants of chattel slavery. Be healthy, you gotta live.